in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 15. And uh, last Saturday and Sunday, uh, if you were not here, um, they are all on our, our Facebook channel, uh, but uh, we had some speakers talk about the, the Word of God, and uh, it just, just was neat to see the, the focus each of them took. They kind of took a different approach, even though the, the basic foundation was there. Um, I just praise the Lord for working all of that out, and for those men that were willing to speak. And those people that were willing to, to attend. Um, but now we are back in the book of Romans and we're going to continue in our study here. Uh, we uh, started out in chapter uh, 15 where Paul brings everything that he mentioned in, in 14, which really speaks of a unity and harmony that should exist. And he really points it towards uh, the church in, in Rome. And uh, then he goes on and he gives some scripture from uh, the uh, what we call the Old Testament to show them, to remind them that even under prophecy, God had a plan for the nations. He was involved in that plan, or they were involved in that plan. And um, we can go to those scriptures and learn from them. Uh, and uh, while we need to rightly divide them, but we can learn from them. And, uh, and get hope from them. And then what we, uh, what we ended on in Romans is we began to talk about, and then Paul narrows it down even further to this, the particular apostleship that he had been given. Uh, although certainly the Gentiles had a place in prophecy, it was different than under, than the place the Gentiles have in Paul's message, because now, uh, in this age of grace, there is no difference. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're Jew or if you're Gentile, uh, or if you're an Israelite or a non-Israelite, you are, have equal access to God through Jesus Christ. And so he made the point that, hey, there is... Uh, God had Gentiles in mind back here, so when I say to you that I am the apostle to the Gentiles, you can be okay with that. Uh, and so he sets the, uh, the Romans at ease in that way. So we're going to continue to develop that, uh, but first I want to have a word of prayer. God and Father, thank you uh, for this opportunity that you have given me uh, to stand up here and, and uh, not talk about myself, not, not tell neat stories. Uh, not uh, talk about my opinions on the matter, on different matters, but Father, to proclaim your word. And just like any human being, uh, Father, there are uh, um, only you have perfect understanding. Uh, and yet, Father, I thank you that um, each of us here that has trusted in Jesus Christ has that, that Holy Spirit. We have your completed word and, and we can go to it. We don't, I don't collect the Bibles after our time today, but we take them home and may we be in them and studying them for ourselves and depending on you uh, to help us uh, understand more, uh, but also, Father, to obey more. Uh, and so, Father, I just uh, pray for our, our the time remaining here uh, as we open your word together. Use it, Father, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's go ahead and start back in, now i got to start in 16, I guess. Um, i got to start in 15. Let me just start in 14, all right? Let's just, Romans 15, 14, it says, And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare speak to, uh, of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about into uh, El yeah, see, I practice that word. Il Il that place I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's uh, foundation. Uh, I guess I'll keep reading. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand, for which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. So I'm not going to rehash uh, what we went through in verses uh, 16, 17, um, or I mean 15 and 16. But what we see there is there was the grace of God given to Paul. He was the minister to the Gentiles. Uh, and we understand, or at least you've heard here in this building, the, the fact that when God paused Israel's program, uh, he decided to choose an apostle to go out to all the nations. And Paul was that, that apostle. He was that minister. Uh, and, uh, and what was happening through that gospel was the Holy Spirit was coming and preparing the Gentiles to be uh, acceptable to God, that, the work of God in their lives. And in verse 17, when we stop and think about the, uh, Paul is an example, not just, yes, of God's grace and salvation and all those things, but also our need to be very careful we don't become puffed up. Uh, that's what happened to Israel. Uh, those Pharisees, those Sadducees, those scribes, all of those people, they became so blinded and so full of themselves that they missed the promised Messiah when he was standing right in front of them. And so you think of, of the Apostle Paul, and uh, even in first in uh, first and second Corinthians, uh, he says things like, "If any person has reason to boast, I more." In other words, you think do you have reason to boast? I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. Do you understand my position? And yet he chose not to do so because he said, "I." And we're going to read this verse in a moment, but I am not worthy to be called an apostle. And so here, after everything Paul has said, uh, given to me the grace of God, uh, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the nations, a position that no one has ever filled, God chose me. I have, verse 17 says, therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. So let's break verse 17 down. First of all, the word therefore. We run into therefore quite often, but it points back to the, the, the context, the, the unique ministry that Paul had just spoken of. Because I have been made this minister, all right? Uh, then it talks about bo boasting. Uh, in verse 17, glory, I may glory. It really is a, a boast. Uh, and not, when I hear boast, I think of uh, a self, an arrogant boast. But a boast is really what you exalt, what you praise, all right? Uh, and so here, the, the boasting that Paul did uh, is uh, uh, in claiming his central role in God's purposes for the Gentiles is a boasting, notice what it says, in Jesus Christ or through Jesus Christ and with respect to the things of God. Paul knew very well that his ministry to the Gentiles had nothing to do with his deservedness. It had everything to do with the work of God's grace in his life. And so what he's saying is, when I boast, 
When I praise the ministry that has been entrusted to me, it gives glory, it boasts of, of Jesus Christ in God, my Father. That's who he desired to exalt and to praise. The fact that the work of Christ is accomplished through Paul. So he says all these things, and once again, he's very careful. I'm going to say this in different ways, different times. So that, so that it, because this is very important. Uh, when Paul mentions his ministry, he doesn't point everyone's attention to him, but he says, I'm saying this for his sake. When it came to himself, uh, Paul says things like, and, and write these down and look at them later, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 9, For I am the least of the apostles. You know what this means? It means here's all these apostles, I'm at the bottom of the heap. Uh, and that was 1 Corinthians 15, 9. Ephesians 3, 8 says this, Unto me, listen, who am less than the least of all saints. So here you have all of these saints. I'm not just the least of them. I'm much. I'm, I'm below the least of them. I'm less than the least. Uh, that's really put yourself in a uh, in an undeserved position. Uh, turn your Bibles to to Second Corinthians chapter three. I'm going to read a, a few verses there in case you want to follow along. But Second Corinthians chapter three, uh, we know elsewhere in books like First Timothy. Uh, Paul really brings into the fact that, first of all, he was persecuting the church of God. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but probably one of the last people I'm going to vote into an office at this church is someone who doesn't believe in God. I mean, I hope we all agree with that, right? Uh, 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 that would be very silly to do. Uh, and so, he, but here you have God, and what he did is he chose someone who was against him, and not just against him, and said, ah, I don't really believe in Jesus Christ, but he said, I don't believe in Jesus Christ so much that I'm going to imprison and uh, threaten those who do. Now, granted, Jesus Christ, the risen Jesus Christ showed up, and Paul's life had to be changed uh, before he became an apostle. Uh, but um, uh, but the fact that here you have this gentleman who was well less than the least of saints, who wasn't fit to be even fit to be called an apostle, and and God decided that's who I want. So you can see why Paul said, and the, the boasting that I do is for him and through him. And in Second Corinthians uh, three, four, and six, I guess I should turn there, huh? That would help. Um, what we're going to realize is that Paul understood all, all of the honor went to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3, 4 through 6 says this, And such trust have we through Christ to God work. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of letter, but of the Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Listen, these verses, uh, let me break it down for you, or let me summarize it, or paraphrase it. Uh, first of all, uh, the sufficiency. I hope you, you understand what sufficiency is. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we say that God is all-sufficient. Uh, in other words, sufficient means that your needs have been met. You are sufficed. All right. Uh, if uh, if you are uh, hungry uh, and uh, you know you you eat uh, sit down and eat a dinner and you feel sufficed, the dinner was sufficient. Uh, and so what Paul is saying here now is all of our needs, all all that we we are all of our necessities. Uh, God is sufficient to meet all of those needs. It's like you sat down for dinner. Uh, and after dinner, uh, you know, even though the dinner was su sufficient, uh, your daughter, and I'm just making things up here, your daughter uh, tempts you to go get a milkshake. All right? Uh, th that's, uh, the dinner was sufficient, and yet you kept adding to it. 
What Paul realizes is, God is all that I need. I don't need anything else. He does not need me. He does not need anyone else. He is sufficient for my ministry. He says, not that we think anything of ourselves. We need to come to this realization that God, like Paul, Paul, or uh, God had a plan for Paul. He had a calling for Paul. He entrusted a responsibility to, to Paul. And what Paul needed to realize is, hey, the results of this aren't on me. They're on him. They're on me trusting that God can do what he has called me to do. They're on God not choosing me because I had something to add. That I had something to offer. That I had something to give. But just in his grace. You need to come to a point where we have been entrusted with responsibilities as well. Responsibilities as his ambassadors. As his heralds which was a, verse, uh, a word used last week. His proclaimers, uh, his, his light in a dark world, uh, walk as children of love, all of those things, and yet God didn't, shall we say, choose you because, oh, that's a loving person, I better choose him and put him in my employ. God is sufficient for you to walk as children of light. God is sufficient for you, he's enough to, to um, so that you can be his ambassador, that you can be his herald. And so the sharing of the gospel does not depend upon your talents or your presentation. It is dependent upon God being enough to use it. Who hath made us Able ministers of the New Testament. God did not hold, the Lord did not hold tryouts for the filling of the position of the apostle of the Gentiles. He did not send out some secret letters saying, hey, I'm considering doing something a little different. Uh, I want to choose the best person, the best fit, the one who, uh, uh, who exhibits the company values here. Uh, so here is a, I'm, I'm gathering 10 of the best people to come in and interview for the position of the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, that's not what happened. As I've already stated, what he did is choose the one who wouldn't have received one of those invitations, who wasn't meeting the qualifications of the company, uh, who wasn't even worthy to be on the list, the long list of potentials. And he made them able ministers. And that's what God did to you. That moment that he took you, uh, when you accepted by faith the salvation through the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he has enabled you, he has sufficed you, not just to be prepared to go to heaven, but to serve. It's all about him and nothing about us. Really the only thing that come, it comes down to us is, I believe it. I have faith to step out knowing that you are sufficient and that you are able. Uh, Galatians 6.14 says this, But God forbid that I should glory except or save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Uh, see, that's what Paul's boasting was in. It was in, through Jesus Christ, exalting and praising uh, the God, God, his God and Lord. Uh, in the cross work of Jesus Christ, that is what we boast in. Not, look at what I have done. Look at how the world is, and I don't do those things. You'd be right there with him if it wasn't for the sufficiency of God and, and, and enablement in Jesus Christ. So the, uh, the focus is, look at what I have done. But let me tell you about what Christ has done to me so that I can abstain from this or, or whatever. I can live a, a new life in Jesus Christ. Um, really, Paul has a, a legitimate reason to glory in his commission and the fruits of his mission. Uh, because 
uh, it was not just through Christ, but, but in Christ. Not because of what Paul did, but because of what the risen and ascended Christ did through him. Uh, you're in 2 Corinthians, so before you turn back to Romans, uh, turn forward to chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is a good cross-reference for these verses we're going to focus on today in the book of Romans. Uh, 1 Corinthians, or, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13 says this. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Verse 13 says, But we will not boast of things without measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. Now let me stop for a moment and paraphrase this for you. Verse 12 deals with the way too many compare their faithfulness. Too many lift themselves up as the epitome of the way God wants things done. And because they've exalted themselves, because they think, I do everything perfectly, I have all my ducks in a row, and so because these people don't do it like me, they are beneath me, I guess. I, I don't know. And Paul says, we dare not do that. We're not going to compare ourselves with everyone else. You should know that in Corinth, part of the problem was a division. A division that said, Apollos is the best minister. He's the one that we should follow. Or Paul is the best. Or all these divisions. Cephas is the best. Um, and Paul said, what are you doing? This is my paraphrase. This is the King James Version. Uh, but these ministers are all ministers of Christ. And here it's a similar thing. Corinthians didn't get it in the first letter. So Paul's saying this. We all, look, we are human, I think. We're all human, right? Maybe some secret cyborgs in here, I don't know. Androids or something. Uh, I'm going to trust and I'm going to assume that you're all human. Alright? I'm going to ask for proof. Uh, but uh, as human beings, there's always a, we want to feel good about ourselves, don't we? Sure we do. Uh, and so the way we do that is we say, look at what they're doing. I'm so glad that I'm a much better Christian than them. And I'm a much better Christian because I do this. I don't know what it is. Because I wear a tie. Oh. We can come up with all sorts of things. And actually looking out here today, I, that could be my thing and I could be like, yeah. Look at all these non tires here. God loves me. I'm just glad they have me to show them the example of what God desired. Because we all know that Jesus was out in the desert in a suit and tie, right? Um, I mean, it's in the Bible here. I'll, I would try to find it, but I don't have time right now. Um, so it's not. Okay, so don't look for it this, this week or this uh, today. But, but this is what happened. And Paul is addressing that once again. Comparing themselves among themselves. That's what they're doing. They're saying, this group, group A in Corinth are saying, we are better because we do this. And the other group over here is saying, well, no, we're better because we do this. And what does Paul say? It is not wise. You know another way to say that is? It's foolish. Because what you're doing is you have just become you have just cut your priorities wrong. Instead of focusing on He is the measure, which is what Ephesians tells us. He is what we are all striving to be. And not only He is the measure, but He is the one we serve. He is the one we praise. We're not looking to praise ourselves because we do it this way. That's foolish. That's not my words. That's what, that's what 
God's inspired word says. And Paul says, we will not boast of things outside of our measure. Here's what that means. There are certain things that God has entrusted to us. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, let's say, I don't know, um, let me use Paul as an example. Uh, Paul could certainly say um, that church in Ephesus, uh, you know, I, I went there and I, 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 I preached that and they responded and we had a, we got a church started there. That's something that God enabled and allowed Paul to do. Now, it's a very slippery slope, Paul wasn't saying, look at what I have done in Ephesus. But Paul could say, I was used by God to begin that church in Ephesus. That is, that is what God had called him to do. He could measure that uh, amongst uh, what his faithfulness. That's the way God measures it, uh, measures us today ultimately, is here is what I've called you to do. Here is what I'm sufficient to do. Here is what I've enabled you to do. Are you going to be faithful or not? That's the measure. It's not, hey, open season, go make up things and, you know, yeah, you're going to get a reward one day because you're wearing the tie on Sunday, whatever it is, 2022, August 14th. Uh, yeah, all right, that's a gem that's going to last through the judgment at the Bema Seat one day. Uh, but ultimately what it is, is here is what God has asked us to do in his word. He has given us the Holy Spirit to complete that work. He has uh, made us who we are to do that work. And that's the measure that we're going to be measured with is we're willing to step out in faith and allow him to use us to do that work. But the key here is we don't compare ourselves to everyone else. This side doesn't compare themselves to this side, all right? The people here don't compare themselves to the people that are not here. But the point is, is this, he's the one that I'm going to boast in. Let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 15. Let's keep going into verse 18. Because he says, for I will not dare to speak any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me. That's such an important uh, phrase too. Notice he says, for I won't dare speak of the things that I didn't do. That's not what he says, is it? That's kind of what he means. But he says it the right way. I will not, I dare not speak of those things that God did not do through me. See where the focus is? Not on what Paul has done, what God has done through him. We can do good things for the wrong reason. It would have been very easy for Paul to run ahead of the Lord and do all sorts of good things without, with, well, leaving God behind. We need to trust God to do the work through us. Now listen, I am not this mystic where, you know, we have to, uh, you know, the power of grace call or whatever. And uh, suddenly the Holy Spirit takes over and we're a new person. And uh, that's not what this is all about. Um, but it is, it's not any less real the way God does it. It's yielding to the Holy Spirit uh, and letting God do the work through us. And it, it is. It's, it's, I wish I could write a book that said, here's how that works. Step one. Step two. You know, it, that's, it comes down to this. It's all about him. Letting him work through us. While our willingness to be faithful and proactive. Uh, so anyway. Um, but Paul says, the, I won't, I dare not speak of those things which Christ did not bring about by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. He dared, he didn't have the he didn't have the audacity, or he was not going to be so presumptuous as to be so bold. Uh, actually, I think this is the same uh, word as uh, back in 15 where it says more boldly, but you can look at that later. I might be wrong. Uh, so he wouldn't, he doesn't, he wouldn't be so presumptuous to be so bold as to speak anything other than what Christ accomplished or produced or worked out through him and entrusted to him. He was not going to take credit for someone else's work 
or for what, or for someone else who Christ used to do that that work. Paul wasn't worried about filling out a uh, an end of the year statement and making himself look good. No, I didn't just start three churches. I started twenty five. Uh, he was focused on what God did through him, and he wasn't going to have the audacity to claim what someone else uh, did. Um, any success that he had was due to divine enablement. Uh, it was a co- an accomplishment of Jesus Christ. It was the grace gifted by God toward him. It was sanctification of the Holy Spirit. Paul is simply the instrument that was used. It would be like a hammer raising up and saying, look at that wall I built. If your hammer ever stands up and talks, you better get that hammer on America's Got Talent or something. But uh, and I, but God has chosen to use instruments that have the potential to talk back. Uh, even though in the, in the gospel he said, look, if I really needed praise, I would have the rocks cry out for me. But he chose people with, that's just an amazing thing that I'm getting off the beaten path here. Um, he had nothing to boast in which he had eventually invented. He did not have cause to boast in what he accomplished individually. Uh, only what Christ did through him. I keep saying that. I keep saying that. I keep saying that because that is where the honor goes to. Not look at what I have done. Look at what Christ has done. Uh, when he says there, the, I'm, I'm in Romans 15, 18, if I lost you. When he says there to make the Gentiles obedient. Um, uh, I guess some verses to write down in Romans, Romans 1, 5, Romans 16, 25. We're not going to look at them now. Uh, but um, but uh, it's denoting a believer's response to Jesus Christ, namely faith, that the Gentiles had faith. Uh, it also shows the distinctiveness of Paul's work because he is the only one that went directly to the Gentiles. And he did not t- declare the earthly deeds uh, or the words or signs and wonders of the earthly Jesus Christ, or of the Twelve, or of John the Baptist, but what Christ wrought in him. Uh, By word and deed, it says there, or uh, speaking and doing, is used to denote the entirety of the actions. Not in word or deed, but how Paul brought about uh, obedience. Uh, He brought about obedience by word and deed, by the message and exhibiting that message before them. So that's what he was willing to do. He went there, he proclaimed what God told him to proclaim, and he lived it. How many times did Paul say, and you know how we behaved among you? He said that to the Corinthians. Because God, well, what uh, Bible school, we sang that song, you walk, talk, and you walk, talk, but you walk, walk, or whatever, you know the song. Uh, but you got to have both. you got to have the talk, you got to have the walk. All right? Um, how did Christ accomplish this work through Paul and in the Gentiles? He did it by word and deed, verse 18 says. He spoke in how he behaved. Uh, notice in verse 19, he did it through power of signs and wonders. In other words, what he spoke and what he did was verified. Uh, verse 19 also says the work was accomplished by power of the Holy Spirit in verse 19. The Holy Spirit used what Paul stepped out in faith and did. Um, oh man, I should have told you to stay in 2 Corinthians. Because there's a few more verses. Let me just see if I can assign them to you for homework. Um, no, I can't. Because I really want to read them. Is that alright? Alright, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I read verses 11 and 12. You remember that? Well, if you don't remember, I did. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This time, I'm going to read verses 13 through 17. And you know what? There's only one verse after 17, so why am I going to leave verse 18 out? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 10, 13, right? All right. Uh, But we will not boast of things without our measure, But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even you. 
But we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as, as, though we, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as you also in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Christ. Verse 15, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other man's labors, uh, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand, but he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And I'm going to read that again. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. That's who we are, are that's who we are serving. So very quickly, I'm going to break this down for you. Uh, first of all, Paul is saying, I'm not going to go take credit for a work that someone else did. Um, uh, because we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to do what God has called us to do. We're going to go where he's called us to go, but we are going to do things his way. Uh, and so, um, what a, again, what a reminder. Listen, here's another thing. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a, uh, uh, it's not a rare thing that in a, in a company, uh, at a job, Someone else takes credit for work that someone else did. Um, I can give you all kinds of examples, but I will not. Uh, you, unfortunately, you probably get it and can relate to that. Um, supervisors especially seem to be guilty of that. You know, the big boss comes and, oh man, your store's looking pretty clean. The supervisor who was just sitting in the office all day said, yes. That is one of my top things that I teach my employees, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, but Paul said, I'm not doing that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what God has called me to do. Uh, I want to I wanna at least deal with this. I want to at least deal with, with the, the two phrases I alluded to in Romans 15. Uh, because in verse 19, the key phrase really is, by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's how he did any work. Or any deeds. It is also how his preaching was effective, uh, and the verification miracles in his early ministry were done. Notice it says through signs and wonders uh, in verse, through mighty signs and wonders in verse 19. Paul was doing supernatural miracles at the time he wrote Corinth. Uh, once again, I say this every time, uh, but uh, this shouldn't shock us. Oh no, Paul did miracles, so we should be doing them. No. Uh, what happened is under the kingdom program, God taught Israel to look for miraculous, mighty signs and wonders. And so if Paul would have come on the scene and he didn't have any of those, uh, people were going to go, <laughs> God gave us mighty signs and wonders to verify who was his apostle and not, and you don't have any of those things. So during that early ministry, when really God had to convince Israel that he was indeed doing something different, Paul had the ability to do those mighty signs and wonders. Now, once Israel had every chance to get that God had set them aside, those weren't part of God's plan for the duration of the church age, the body of Christ, the mystery age. They're not in effect today. What verifies whether someone is a minister of God today is the completed word of God. You don't need me to stand up here and go, blah, 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 blah. you don't need me to start blah, 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 going into a seizure or anything. What you need from me is, thus saith the word of God. But here he says, he could tell the Corinthians, uh, and it was verified by mighty signs and wonders. And because the Jews required a sign, and I told you in chapter 14 and 15, there was a Jewish church in Rome. Uh, because they were required a sign, uh, and I went through all of that, uh, but it was verified. There, there should have been no doubt that Paul met all the qualifications. Uh, and let me just give you a few verses. Acts fifteen twelve. It said the Acts fifteen twelve. It says the multitude kept silent, declaring the miracles and wonders done amongst the Gentiles. In Acts 19.11 it said, God did special miracles by the hand of Paul. 
Uh, as far as the kingdom program is concerned, it was very similar to what was done during the exodus from Egypt. I wish I could make that comparison because, anyway. Uh, but those signs during the uh, exodus were to verify that Moses was doing God's work and to show the Egyptians, the Gentiles, that God was real and powerful and uh, there was no one like him. So it is not an accident that soon afterwards... God is offering to make the ones to whom he proved himself with signs and wonders a uh, special uh, people in, in, in Israel, in Exodus chapter 19. Uh, and so here, uh, God gets all the honor and glory. A second, serve and live in God's power. These people had no excuse not to recognize that God had called, or the risen Lord Jesus Christ had called Paul with a special ministry, and all he was doing was trying to faithfully fulfill that special ministry that had been verified, it had been uh, recognized, uh, and now Paul's saying, but what I want you to get, and what I want your focus on is not whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, or what group you belong to, but listen, he is who it's all about. That's who I give the glory to, and that's who they should, and that's who we should give the glory to. And say, hey, listen, let me tell you about our great Savior and what he can do. Uh, let's pray. God and Father, thank you for this opportunity to boast about you today. Yes, we may not be the apostle to the Gentiles, but Father, our work is no less important. We have a powerful, life-changing message of hope, message of salvation to take out to a lost and dying world. And Father, you haven't given us instructions and left us on our own, but I thank you that today we were reminded you are sufficient and you have enabled us to do that work. Father, we're telling people about you. So may we be willing to step out in faith and do so. What a wonderful opportunity we have given. And what a Savior we have to boast of. And it's in the name of that Savior I pray right now. Jesus Christ. Amen.